So you know, when you deploy uh, Protect Plus, the, you know, the OVA deployment, you know, as soon as you sp spin up the machine, um, you can access the, the web interface, um, HTML uh, uh, GUI, uh, loading. I'm going to log in uh, with a user that's uh, specifically set for me. <coughs> And so when I, when I log into the interface uh, within Protect Plus, um, we give you kind of a dashboard view, kind of overview again of what's going on. So it's giving me a summary of you know, protection, how many machines within the env configured environment in the, um, uh, you know, the applications and, and uh, uh, virtual machines that we've registered within Protect Plus, how many of those are being protected, how many are unprotected, um, some metrics around jobs, you know, are there any jobs that have failed or, or what jobs might be running currently within the, the platform. We give some details around the uh, uh, vSnap repository, you know, its capacity and utilization and, and storage efficiency. Um, and then uh, down towards the bottom, just kind of give you a, a very high level overview of protection by policy, how many pr specific virtual machines are being uh, protected by the different SLAs that are defined within the system. And then on the bottom right, just some simple, uh, you know, uh, uh, health statistics around the, uh, the, uh, the uh, SPP instance itself. So, you know, th there's a, a lot of different places I could start, but I think that the best place is to kind of show you, again, because everything is SLA based, kind of show you how those are defined within the system. So again, you know, creating an SLA, um, there, are th there are three SLA, um, three SLAs that are defined and you know, pre predefined, I should say, when you deploy the product, gold, silver, and bronze. You have the ability to, to modify those as needed. And then just as importantly, have the ability to create new SLAs to meet whatever my business requirements are. What does it take to create an SLA? Uh, simply give it a name, yeah. define the retention and frequency, right? How often do I wanna you know, take copies of whatever it is that's gonna be protected by this, this uh, SLA? And how long do I wanna retain them? Or how many copies do I wanna retain within vSnap? And then where do I wanna land them, right? There's, uh, you have the ability to have you know, again, multiple vSnap repositories. I could have them go to my primary, secondary, and so forth. Um, also, part of that SLA, um, I can define, uh, hey, I want this, this to, th these, whatever's protected by the service level to also be replicated to a partner vSnap instance as part of the SLA. I, uh, optionally, I can define that. And then lastly, I have the ability to define the offload to protect. So how is that, you know, the replication different from primary, secondary, tertiary? I always thought that secondary would have been a replicated copy of the vSnap. So, just for clarity's sake, the, the target site, you have the ability to, to the, you know, the nomenclature that you use for those can be whatever you like. You can define what those sites are. It might be primary, secondary. It might be line of business A and line of business B, whatever your needs are for having those different repositories. And you're defining a group of eSnap repositories effectively? You're, you're defining repositories within the system, and then you also, if you want to replicate, you just create the relationship between those repositories. Okay. So I say my primary is, and has a relationship with my secondary, so now I know that it'll replicate from primary to secondary. If you could slide up for a second. Sure. There's, so you got bronze, gold, and silver, and it's called SLA policy, and I know you're going to hate me on this, and maybe I'm being a little nitpicky here, but an SLA is a combination of RTO and RPO expectations. That's what an SLA is from a data protection perspective. That's what the backup guys are done. That's a job configuration. That's every day at a certain time and how long I keep it. Those are backup policies, but that's not an SLA. An SLA is you know, how far out of you know, compliance am I from my, re my recovery point and how, far, how close can I get back to my, you know, when I recover, can I meet my RTL? That's an SLA. As it, as when, I, when you deal with a managed backup provider, and you're dealing with SLAs, that's what they're measured on. So I, I, I'm having a question. I mean, I understand maybe I'm nitpicking here, but I mean, does, I, I don't know if anybody else has noticed that. I mean, I, because yeah, so I'm have the same thing. They don't call it SLAs, they call it policies, but I mean, I, that's not to me what an SLA is. So yes, we've also noticed it, and that's something that we're you're talking. About, okay, we're talking about. At least I'm not crazy. All right, good. You know the basics: ret um, retention, frequency, and placement. Yeah. Right? And getting so people initially think about, as you said, backup jobs. You get to your SLA if, from yeah, those, right? But that's yeah, that's. Right. But yes, we're going to start expanding the scope of what the SLA means and and the, the, the and provides right? rubric. Since I'll bring it up, one of your competitors that does do SLAs when you set up their policies. You, it, you actually put in what's my recovery time and what are my recovery point objectives, and it does all the scheduling for you 
right? And that's yeah, what you consider. That that's an SLA policy, as opposed. So when you talk, so, you know, what I'm saying. It, so let's let, if I can ask a question. Yeah. If, if I back off of um, recovery time objective, because a lot of that can be subjective to my network and how fast am I getting data back. But mm -hmm. recovery point objective, mm -hmm. is that not covered under frequency? Like how often? Like if every 15 minutes I take a snapshot, my recovery point is every. 15 but what if your window exceeds that? What if what if it takes longer than that? to do it, and so how is it going to manage sure. that automatically? Good point. Okay. I just, just questions. Okay. Um, again, the, the last uh, you know, part of an, an SLA optionally is to define, hey, do I want to do offload to protect as part of this uh, SLA policy? What are we defining there? Simply the frequency. Retention is actually defined within protect itself, right? So we're just defining how often we send those copies off to protect. Protect does the management aging of those copies, but again, we maintain uh, you know, um, uh, it, within our catalog, records of anything that we send off to protect. So again, you don't have to use protect due to the recovery for something that's been sent off to there. You can do the recovery directly from the interface within uh, within SPP. So that's creating an SLA policy. How do I leverage those? How do I put them into use? Um, I do that. Uh, I'll show you. I'll give you the VMware example. Um, so if I come into the hypervisor uh, screen, go to the uh, VMware, and choose backup. And here is where. Um, here's where I um, would configure the vCenters or the, uh, in this example of VMware, the, the vCenter instances that I, I want to leverage. We have one that's already been defined here. Adding another one is as simple as just coming in, providing the credentials to connect to that vCenter instance. Um, but we, when we register that resource, that hypervisor, we are going out and running an inventory against it. We're speaking to its APIs, understanding what is the hierarchy of that. That gives us the ability then to choose what we want to you know, uh, apply the uh, SLA policy to. Um, I could do that just by you know, digging in here from the top level. It's going to kind of just iterate through the hierarchy of the hypervisor. Or I could search if I know there's a particular you know, folder or virtual mach uh, machine name that I want to try to match. I can uh, go ahead and do that. And it's going to you know, come back and show me what matches. And I just choose a particular resource and associate it with a particular policy. So I literally just if, uh, a little slow connection here. Steve wasn't kidding. <laughs> there we go. So you know these these are the virtual machines out here. If I wanted to you know protect this particular virtual machine, all I would need to do is basically just define which SLA policy that I want to associate it with, save it, and now the next time that policy runs, that virtual machine will be picked up and and, uh, and a copy will be created. Of course, the first copy is going to be a full. Everything else is using CBT, so it'll be incrementals forever uh, from that point on. And obviously, if you do something, say, for instance, I, I choose the vCenter server as my source or a folder, anything I add into that at a later point in time would automatically be picked up. So if I added a new a virtual machine into a folder, uh, the next time that policy runs, it's going to pick up that virtual machine as well. And, and, and uh, I'm assuming I could do all this programmatically if I had like, VRA or some other tool actually deploying the virtual machine. I could tell VRA, hey, go ahead and set up the backup job. Everything that everything I'm showing you can be done through REST API calls. So absolutely, you could from that from the area you could you could you could do that. Can you show us how you are managing uh, data protection from for the cloud? How am I managing data protection for the cloud? Yeah, to put uh, let's say some data in cloud. You said that you are so we, support. So we don't we don't have native offload to the cloud today. We have the ability. We offer Protect Plus um, as an application in the IBM cloud. Okay. So. You would click a button, you want to procure it, it gets spun up, you're going to come into this interface just like it were running within your, your you know, on-premises infrastructure, and you would just configure it to work with your, v, you know, your vCenter uh, that, that you're running in the cloud. But where Christian showed you the uh, ability to replicate, if you had a vSnap repository that was in the IBM cloud for VMware, let's say you, you had a copy there, you could replicate that as your target, target for replication. Okay. Right? Okay, thank you. So that's, that's you know, as, as simple as it is for backing up a virtual machine. There's certainly some options I can configure, things like how to ha handle errors. You know, I can talk about throttling and so forth, things of that nature. Um, mention the 15 minutes to, from deployment to get to this point. Yeah, I mean, it's, again, I, I, as I mentioned earlier, I mean, I was with a customer in the UK last week who mentioned that, you know, they, they validated our claim that, you know, literally within 15, 30 minutes, you're, you can have the product up and running. It's, you know, spin up the, the OVA file. If you want to use it, you can use one of the default SLAs if you like. Literally register the resources you want, add them to the policy, and it's immediately backing them up. Um, conversely, when I don't want to do a restore, when I want to leverage copies, I would go to the restore tab. Um, load. 
<laughs> While that's loading, um, presumably you're using the VSP storage API for invoking those? We're using the VSP storage, storage API. APIs yeah. and the, the data protection APIs combination. Yeah, that's deprecated now, but VSP storage API. Yeah. Yes, we're using V. Well, we're talking to vSphere to get inventory, and we're using vStorage at vDDK. Okay. Right to move data, so we're so using both sets. You said you're going to be doing that with Acropolis as well with Nutanix soon. Um, are you going to be talking to Prism or Calm mm. when you do question. that? So you're going to be Sorry. talking to Prism or Calm when you talk to Nutanix? Oh, I, we're Not still sure. doing the, the the work with them. Oh, you still through doing their engineering. Yeah. I mean, the the goal is to have it available by Q4. But we're working with at development to development doing that right now. So again, conversely, I want to you know, again, it's all about data use, reuse of, of these copies. Um, all I need to do is come in and, and you know choose that you know the particular resource that I want, and then we'll show you all the restore points that we have for that. So for instance, you know these virtual machines here, if I expand underneath, it's going to show me all of the um, snapshots that we have. It's going to tell me where they reside. Right, these are in the primary vSnap instance. If I happen to have offloaded them to protect, it would, it would indicate that this is an offloaded copy. Um, and I can you know, either just choose to use the latest by clicking this carrot here next to it, and it'll always use the latest as part of this restore policy. Um, or I can choose a particular point in time if I like. Um, in terms of the options for doing that restore, so I'm saying, hey, I want to use the latest snapshot of this particular virtual machine. And when I spin it up, there are some you know, options around how I want to do that, right? Do I want it to go back to the original ESX server where, where the you know, original <coughs> copy resides, or do I want to go to an alternative ESX uh, uh, host or cluster? I have different modes that I can bring it up in. There's three, test, uh, production, and clone. Uh, I'll to start by describing test. What test is doing is, is it, it's um, identifying the snapshot within the vSnap repository that contains the copy that you want. It's mounting that to the uh, hypervisor and then spinning up uh, the, you know, the virtual machines from there. Um, so you're literally running those virtual machines off a mounted snapshot. It's not moving anything into your-, your Is it doing source. anything with the networks on it? Yeah, I'll, I'll get to that next. Um, then production does everything that test just did, but then it's gonna power down the production machine and vMotion this uh, new copy with the uh, UUD ID of the original machine. So it's in effect overwriting production. This is, hey, I, I truly have an issue in production. I may have spun it up in test to make sure the copy that I want, I spun up is the one I want and it's functional. Now vMotion and over and overwrite the production instance. And then clone does the same thing that production does, the difference being um, it is going to use a unique UUID. So it's truly creating a, you know, a new a virtual uh, machine clone and <coughs> vMotioning that into the target data store. In terms of network settings, I have the ability to either um, allow the system to define it, so either pull an IP address or go in and manually set it, or I can use the original that was in the original machine. Um, if I go to an alternate um, location, I can choose uh, in network settings, we can do things like mapping. So hey, hey I want to go to this uh, you know, different uh, um, vCenter, and I want to um, map the networks that were in the original to new networks in that uh, target vCenter server, right? So we can, we can handle that. And that and again, this is all key to, you know, if I'm spinning up a, a, a copy that came out of production, I certainly want to ensure that it's fenced, that it's not impacting that production machine that's running, so we give you that flexibility to do that. Um, do you have a plugin for this, for other automation and orchestration platforms like uh, VRA, VRO, um, Cisco UCS Director, et cetera, et cetera? No, no plugins today. Jim, any no, plugins? those are the things that when we put up like the vCloud and the vRealize integration, those are Parts of what we're talking about. It's not just the protection, it's the orchestration piece. A couple other th options that, you know, every, every policy, whether it's a ba uh, backup or restore, you have the ability to do pre and post scripting. So if it's not a, a, an app application that we natively support, like for instance, Oracle, you know, that we can go in and we can put the database in hot backup mode and perform the snapshot and so forth. Um, if you need to you know, run a pre or a post script, we have the ability to do that. And then there's just some advanced options around things like how we handle errors and so forth as this, this, uh, this runs. Um, and then I can, you know, I can save that. I can either run that ad hoc as I just did by just clicking restore, and that's just a one time. It's going to spin up that virtual machine from that, that copy. Or I can manage the job and say create a job from this. 
I want this. This goes back to my example earlier where I had that development team that wants on a weekly or you know, periodic basis to have that environment spun up from, say, the most recent copy. I can just you know, name this, this job, this define the frequency when I want it to run and so forth, and then that's going to run automatically. And again, I can configure it if I, if I so desire to, to tear down what's already there if you want to prevent the you know, environment from sprawling and you've got a development team that's just you know, spinning up copy after copy and you want to control that. We have the ability to do that. So just, just to clarify, you had mentioned um, you mentioned when you do like a clone or a or uh, a restore that you can do that directly on the storage that is attached to Protect Plus, right? And then and then storage yes, motion over. Yes, that is the, the default. So when okay. you do a test restore, mm -hmm. what it's doing is it's taking the, it's identifying the snapshot in the vSnap repository and mounting that to the the ESX host mm -hmm. in the VM example and then instantiating the VMs out of that snapshot from there. Mm -hmm. So you're literally running those VMs out of the mounted snapshot. Production and clone start the same exact way, but then as soon as it's up and running, we vMotion over to a, uh, a new uh, the, the target data store. Can you just do a restore without having to bring it up on the, ba on the, on the backup data store? Like I just wanted to restore it directly into production. I don't want to, or just directly to a data store. I don't want to power it up or anything on my backup repository. I just want it to go to its destination and then power it up. No, right now it's all storage vMotion. So you're going through those steps either way. Okay. And it just comes in as a like an NFS mount off the vSnap yeah. repository? And and NFS for, for VMware, iSCSI for, uh, yep. for Hyper-V, right? Yep. Same as How we doing? 10 minutes. 10 minutes. How does that work in a fiber channel environment? It doesn't. No, iSCSI. <laughs> So we, today we can support um, land-free backups, just not restores. Restores is on the on the roadmap. Pretty much same as rubric, really, isn't it? Yeah. it and the key there is you'd have to use a a, um, a physical VAD proxy that has yeah. FC connectivity. It's the VMware API. It's there's only so many ways you can do this. Yeah. So that's doing a you know a, a, a machine restore, as I just showed. I could have multiple machines as part of that policy if I wanted. Um, I could also you know by clicking into any one of these. You'll see I now have identified the disks underlying that machine. So if I wanted to just restore a disk, I can do that and then just choose where you want it to, to be mounted to. And then the, the last type of restore would be an actual file restore. So this is where I've you know, enabled as, as part of a, a, um, a policy, of a, a policy uh, you can optionally say I want to um, do file cataloging on that guest. Right? So it's, you don't have to do it. If you, if you so desire, you check the box. There are some prerequisites for... Linux, we need uh, you know, an SSH connection to the guest. For Windows, we use WinRM. There's some requirements that you have to set up in terms of credentials and connectivity. But once you do that, what happens is when we create the snapshot, when we go out and connect to the host, then we are then connecting that host um, remotely, securely, and kicking off the process internally that's going to walk the file system, create the um, zipped up you know, f um, uh, files with, that contain the metadata about that file system. And then we transfer those back to SPP and integrate them into that global catalog. Okay. So by doing that, you know, I could come in here and say I wanted to look for, uh, you know, uh, I know I had a file called README, right, that I'm looking for. I don't need to know where it resides. I don't need to know the hypervisor, which VM, whatever. I literally just need to know the name. I can filter by things like, hey, I'm only looking for ones in a particular date range or a particular operating system type or, or a path on the... On the Do you catalog the entire VM every snap? Do like, we, you have to, do you have to walk the entire file system of every v, of the VM? Every VM that you want cataloged, get from like file A to file Z on every time. Uh, yes, I'm not sure about eff efficiencies between those. I don't, Jim, yes, can you well, that's that? what we're doing every time. We do allow you to exclude some stuff out of that search. But no, but if I have a snap, that, let's say I have. Yes, because those, yeah. yeah, those are, those files are, technically on those snaps every time you take them. Yes. So you don't keep a track of what files have changed between snaps and just catalog those that have changed somehow. No, not right now. Okay. We're looking into efficiencies. Keep me honest, Jim, but as part of a backup, doing file um, cataloging occurs asynchronously after that. Right. So we'll snapshot the VM yeah, yeah, and put that in, yeah. but then it's running after the fact. So there could be a delay in getting access to the cataloged data. File what, catalog. what are you depend from a performance perspective? What are you dependent on for the speed of those catalogs? The speed of the catalog jobs after the fact. What are you? Because if I've got two thousand VMs and I've got to go through every one and walk a file system, every one of them. That takes time, and maybe I'll run into my window, right? So what you know, how fast? Or run to an SLA where I need a catalog before a period of time, right? And I want that file recoverable, let's say, in a couple of hours. What is what are the are the variables from a performance perspective that make it faster? 
That's going to be the the amount of horsepower you have in the VM. We're just basically walking the, the file tables and the inodes in all those machines. From the VM doing the cataloging? Yes, it, inside the VMs we're doing this. Inside of the, 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 the Protect in, Plus? or Inside the guest. Inside the guest. We are so inside we, we... So you're doing it in the, in the, in the production the guest. guest you're doing this? Yes, in the guest. So you're not mounting... We're the, not, no, we're not doing it on... That's right, we're not doing it in the vSnap on the data that lands in vSnap. We're doing it inside the guest. I'm putting overhead on my virtual yeah. machine, you, production yeah. virtual machines by doing this? If, yes, you are if you choose to do this. But what if the file system changes during the like during that process? I get some changes here, like I've done a like. Are you? Am I cutting a snap in the in the ho, in the in the guest, and then that's what's going? I'm trying to figure out what happens when the data is actually. Yeah, what, about, what if I've changed the data in the middle of this process? Files, How do I know? The is the catalog going to be different we're than what's in the snap? Yeah, we're look. No, we're we're looking at the. We're getting a um, snapshot of the file table, the inode table, and looking at that. That's consistent with what we're backing up. Okay. A lot of the other guys will do a catalog of this. They'll mount the snap somewhere yes, no, else in the catalog. Yeah. Right. We're not doing You're that. not there yet. Okay. Not today, at least. So you know, this gives me the ability, to, obviously, I can see uh, this gives me all the results that come back within the catalog that match my, my search criteria. And then I can choose, you know, it's going to show me all the recover points for that particular file. So it's going to show me here this, you know, seven, eight, seven snapshots I have of that one. I can choose which one I want, and then I have the ability to um, decide, you know, where do I want that to go? Am I going to overwrite the original file, go to a different directory, go to a different machine, so forth? You, again, you can, you can combine that with the role-based access control capabilities to, in effect, enable self-service uh, file recovery. Uh, you know, I, could, I could confine a particular user or set of users to a certain group of virtual machines and let them do you know, recoveries of you know, files that only, uh, you know, results that only come back within that set of, of uh, resources. Do you integrate with the native array level snapshots um, so that you can leverage those capabilities through your... Not today, that's coming later okay. this year. But today our, our snapshots are at the hypervisor level or for applications like SQL and Oracle we're doing you know, uh, a VSS or uh, an RMAN image oh, copy. We are bringing on later this year support for uh, storage array integration, and then that, that list will just continue to grow. As you know, certainly we're going to bring on IBM arrays probably first, but there'll be others as well as other vendors. In terms of the, the uh, indexing process, is it something similar to Live Browse, for example? If you have an FS that Com will let you use, uh, Com will let you do, or do you actually just have to back it up, mount it, scan everything, index it, and then dismount it, sort of thing? I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? So when you index it, do you have to back it up and then mount it behind the scene, read everything and index it, and then dis dismount it? Or do you do something clever like Live Browse, for example, that Commvault lets, you, you know, lets you do? It's not, it's not Live Browse. I mean, again, as, Jim, as, you, as you said, we're, we're walking the... the you know, Manually, one by one, okay. Um, let me just switch real quick. I know we're almost uh, up against our, our time limit here. I just wanted to show you quickly our, you know, I, I showed you VM backup and restore and file level restore. I wanted to show you quick our, our integration with uh, things like SQL Server. Um, again, so this is you know, an agentless approach to, to um, you know, backing up uh, uh, database instances. I manage the servers I want to work with, so I just register the SQL servers, actual, you know, actual servers that I want it to uh, uh, potentially protect. Um, We'll go and inventory those just like we would a hypervisor, and then it's going to show me the database, uh, the, the SQL instances, and then in those instances, the particular databases that are there, um, and I can then choose to, um, to, to, to you know, do a, a backup of that. So in those instances, it's not a machine backup, right? We're doing a database backup. Whether it's a virtual or physical server, it's a backup of the database, whether it's Oracle or SQL Server. And then again, that gets pushed into the catalog, and you have the ability to do recovery of um, of, of databases, just like I showed you for, for virtual machines. In fact, let me show you the restore tab real quick for a database. I can come in, so this is the only you know, database instance that I happen to have a copy of, and here's the databases that are within it, and I could say, hey, this you know, test database, I want to use the latest one to do a restore, and as part of those options, you know, where do I want it to go? Back to the original SQL server, to an alternate SQL server instance where I'll you know, spin up the, the database there. I've got different types of, of um, uh, similar to what we do with, with uh, uh, VM restores, we have different types of restores for, for databases. Um, uh, um, 
So all the all the features that you're showing us around like VMware backup, Oracle backup, SQL backup, those aren't unique just to the the plus component of of Spectrum Protect, right? I mean, I could I could just, I assume I could do that with the legacy product, right? Like I could do VMware level backups and SQL and Oracle well, and all those things. VE provides that cap yeah. capability. The the primary differentiator between plus and VE is that this is agentless, whereas VE would require. Um, and you could do this with SQL and Oracle, but again, more moving parts with the old product. So you have to have a, you would have to have an agent You'd deploy have an agent. to do the SQL backups or the you Oracle backups. The, SQL backup, the, or the VMware backups, doing, though, I mean, you yeah. could do native VMware API level backups and restores. Right. Right. Um, I know we're, I think we're just about out of time. Five, minute, five minutes left. So I showed you backups and restores uh, for both, uh, you know, virtual infrastructure as well as applications. Um, file, files for a second. The RBAC stuff. Yeah, let me just real quickly just I'll, I'll step into the um, uh, access here is where we our role based access control is is configured. So again, I mentioned earlier we operate on the concept of resource groups, roles, and users. So um, there are um, built in resource groups that come as defined as part of the system, and I can create a custom resource group containing whatever I like, and I can start that from a template, meaning <laughs> resource group and modify it or create a completely new resource group where I'm gonna choose all the different you know, particular resources that I want to be part of that group. Uh, and then once I have that, I would associate that resource group with a particular role and user, right? So the role just defines what you can do, what your permission levels are. And the, the, uh, when I associate that role and resource group to a particular user, that defines what they can do within the system, okay? And as I mentioned earlier, we have you know, integration with LDAP. You know, to, that's what, you know, more, more often than not, that's what our enterprise customers would do is, configure LDAP and then associate their users to particular groups within LDAP, right? So they can manage those, those users from there. Um, last thing I would show you real quickly before we, we wrap up, um, reporting capabilities. So we have some built-in reports uh, within the system. Uh, I mentioned earlier, you know, we very flexible in terms of our ability to add new reports. The infrastructure for reporting is built into the product. If it's in the catalog, it's relatively easy for us to come up with a new report type if needed. If a, customer comes to us and asks us for a particular report that we feel is, would benefit our larger customers, you'll likely see that get added in as a, a pre-canned report. But I have the ability for any of these reports um, to uh, uh, define its schedule um, and uh, then have that, e that you know, potentially say emailed to a, a group. So say for instance, I have a, a, an application owner, VM owner, uh, they wanna get the, um, you know, a, a protection report on their application on a weekly basis. <coughs> and we can have this report run on whatever schedule you like and then email that report to that user or user so they can understand what the level of protection is if, if needed. Any questions on anything I covered so far? I think I pretty much got most of the points I wanted to, to touch upon. Not a question so much, a, just a comment. You guys talked a lot about in the slide deck about you know data reuse and and developers being able to drive a lot of this through APIs. I would have actually liked to have seen a lot of that in the demo versus just basic VMware backup and restore. I mean, that's okay. kind of, that's, Appreciate that's a feedback. requirement for yeah. any product these days. So, I mean, to do that, I mean, literally, to, you know, to do a restore, I would literally, you know, all I would have done is just when I define the details of that, click, you know, manage, create a managed job for that, and then I have the ability to just make you, REST API. Pulse. You don't have an API catalog or, or walker in the web, in your GUI, do you? We have, uh, there's a um, full REST API guide. So it doesn't up. have like a try it here, like a web, like a lot of the other products, have, I mean, other products, I shouldn't say a lot. Other products have where you can actually um, test it out in there and get, the, and it'll actually give you we, the, the we, syntax we, we don't. and stuff. No, okay. I mean, you could use a firebug or something in your browser yeah, to see the REST calls just, if you know, like. It's convenient. No, not, not yet. Yeah, we do have full documentation of the REST API and the vSNAP API, okay. as well as contextual help. So anywhere within the platform, if you click help, it's going to give you help contextual to what you're doing, what screen you're on within the system. Um, and then obviously there's uh, things like the ability to download the logs from the system. I can download, I can download the logs for a particular job if I like. You know, one backup job failed, you have the ability to just click the button, download that, and provide support if needed and so forth. Your comment's interesting. Our, our, the guy that runs our group, he wants the same thing, right? In the demonstration, showcase, if you're doing data reuse, showcase the data reuse capabilities. Showcase the roles-based access capabilities. That's probably more important than just the fact that, sure, of course you can restore it. You better be Yeah, able. I mean, that's why I was asking if this, I mean, what's, really, what's, what's the reason to buy this versus if I'm already a, a protect 
you know, a Spectrum Protect customer. Or a backup customer. Or any, oh, any oh, other okay. backup software. Why do I want this? <laughs> right. so, no, that's, 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 that would have been interesting to point. see. Christian also just made a good point about downloading the logs. Within IBM, we're developing a, a additional new, new um, capabilities for, to support uh, not only our systems, but our system software from a, from a software-defined storage standpoint. It's Spectrum Insights, the ability to communicate directly with support quickly and easily hit this button, you know, our systems now, we can send that information, now we can actually do that. We'll be able to do that with, here's your log file. Now support doesn't have to go say, send me this log file, what, I need this piece, I need this piece. Now we Put can send on it the, all on to them. FTP server, yeah. Yeah. Instantly. The, share. Right. the other thing is, I, we I work in sort of a legacy IBM shop, um, a lot of mainframe, AX, DB2, I don't see any of that in here, probably intentionally. Yeah. Uh, is that something that so, so AIX support is coming with DB2 support. A AIX on Oracle is here, coming, well, next. Or Oracle running on AIX. Mm -hmm. or, or, yes, and then DB2 yeah, this year. 